is the neurochemical that we want to think about anytime we're talking about neural plasticity and in particular attention high attentional states so everyone knows that the brain is very plastic early in life so from birth until about age 25 you can learn so much for better or for worse i always say the downside is that early in life you're you have less control over your life circumstances control generally over your life circumstances but the brain becomes less plastic however we know based on nobel prize winning work and recent work in addition to that that the neuromodulator acetylcholine is secreted when we pay attention to something very specific it acts as sort of a spotlight in the brain making certain synapses the connections between neurons more active and more likely to be active again than others so when you hear that song that you love so much and it moves you and you feel dopamine being pulsed into your body that's a real thing you're actually getting dopamine secretion you've formed that deep association with that and acetylcholine draws your attention to that and that song is essentially wired in a very indelible way into your nervous system at multiple you can probably even with certain songs you can feel your body start to energize because of course the brain through connections with your muscles controls your body so for things that are traumatic or negative what we're really talking about is neuroplasticity that's focused on unlearning and most of the therapies for this whether or not it's EMDR, eye movement desensitization reprocessing, or it's traditional psychoanalysis and psychotherapy, or it's somatic embodied release, big, you know, kundalini breathing type. Almost all of those are designed to do something, which is to bring the person or you bring yourself into a state of heightened alertness, right? You can't do this stuff when you're sort of half asleep. Heightened alertness and then focusing your attention on the traumatic or negative event. This is the way that it works. And then pairing that with something new. You know, traditionally this was done with things like NLP or in talk therapy where people would feel the relation the positive relationship with the therapist. That was kind of the main rationale in association with this very traumatic, sometimes even, you know, shameful type events. And the idea is that you you would simultaneously have those two experiences, the negative one and the feeling of safety and you would rewire those circuitries. I actually believe that can work, but it can take a lot of times it can take a lot of visits to the therapist which is not to say it's bad it's just not everyone has access to those resources things like eye movement desensitization reprocessing simply moving the eyes laterally while recounting these negative events the woman who devised this figured out that somehow when people recount these traumatic experiences when they're doing these lateralized eye movements not vertical eye movements they somehow separate out the negative emotions and i thought for years people would ask me about this stuff tom and i thought this is ridiculous first of all i'm a vision scientist and i work on stress it's like there's no way and then i really ate my words because four papers two in humans two in mice and then a fifth paper published in nature which is kind of our super bowl of scientific publishing showed that these lateralized eye movements quiet the amygdala they actually suppress activation of this threat detection center in the amygdala and why would that be true? Ah, so this is really where it gets cool. Turns out because of when the way that we view the visual world when we move through space, when our head moves or when we walk and things flow past us, that these lateralized eye movements are what happens when you move forward in space, when you're walking, when you're moving forward towards something. And that suppresses activation of the amygdala. Now you say why? Well, okay, so then 2018, my laboratory did an experiment, it was actually a graduate student in my laboratory, where we're looking at fear. In this case, we were looking at fear to big looming objects that either trigger freezing or running and hiding. There's a brain area that's in your brain and my brain that mice also have that triggers a third option, not run and hide, not freeze, but forward confrontation. This is the, no, I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna move forward in the face of adversity. This is the growth mindset, I'm gonna lean into friction. And it turns out that this circuit is linked to the dopamine reward pathway. When we move forward in the face of a threat, and obviously we wanna do this in healthy, adaptive ways, we suppress activity of the amygdala, Dobre, the physical zimam. action of moving forward, and there's a signal sent to the areas of the brain that control dopamine reward. Those reward centers then trigger the release of dopamine to reward forward effort in the face of stress or threat. So when you hear about people saying, look, Take some physical action when you're feeling exhausted. Take some forward physical action when you're feeling overwhelmed by this traumatic experience. Now that could be in the form of a walk, in the, 
Now this therapist, she figured out with EMDR, Dobre. you can't take people walking around for therapy sessions. She figured out that these lateralized eye movements are what triggers suppression of the amygdala. And it makes perfect sense because the amygdala, this threat detection center in our brain, it doesn't connect to the limbs. So how does it know if you're moving forward? Well, because the eyes are moving. You have these reflexive eye movements that move anytime you're moving through space. Wow. So to make Dude. this a little more succinct, it's really forward movement, action, pushing yourself across that threshold, not only rewards you, but it suppresses activity of the fear centers in the brain. And these are ancient hardwired mechanisms. These aren't hacks. These are things that mother nature right. installed in us. So 